Hello brothers and sisters, be happy. This is the day that the Lord has made. We're jumping into songs three. By night on my bed I sought him whom my soul loveth. I sought him but I found him not. Woman wisdom who has now gone through this process for some time is becoming impatient. She's trying to make it happen and in doing so she's in the Lord's way. In her attempt to try and make it happen she has fallen temporarily, no doubt on more than one occasion, from the Lord's presence and she can feel the embrace, oh sorry, and she cannot feel the embrace as strongly. This makes her feel intense loneliness. She says, I will rise now and go about the city in the streets and in the broadways. I will seek him whom my soul loveth, and I sought him, but I found him not. In her pain of loneliness, she takes desperate measures and gets up and goes about the city. She takes it upon herself to go and find her Adam. Oh no, she is having a crisis of faith, but she doesn't even realize it because her own forethought has begun giving herself the delusion that she must seek. And the folly in this action is you need not seek what you already have been given or what you've already found. But the Lord allows her this folly and teaches her a valuable lesson or lessons. She looked, she dated, she mated with the wrong people, she sat with the wrong people, but she didn't find him. Why? Because he isn't out there in Egypt. Songs 3.3 3. The watchmen that go about the city found me, to whom I said, Saw ye him whom my soul loveth? The watchmen. There's two interpretations, both interconnected. On the one hand, in texts like Enoch, the watchmen are the fallen angels. And they used men to trick women, to trick the woman wisdom and the other daughter. Their allure so strong, she was asking them, Are you him? Whether it be spiritual asking inside, speaking it out loud as a question, or dating to find it out, it matters not. It's all the same thing. She goes about and she says, Saw ye him and my soul lovers. So that the fallen angels are running riot trying to trick her. On the other hand, there's also the watchmen who are the other Christian men who call themselves watchmen on the wall, and they also mock her. Okay? They mock her, they take the piss out of her. And they also try and lure her and capture her under a spirit of domination and control. They probably don't know they're doing it either. They know, you know, forgive them, Father, that they know what, not what they do. Because they can also be imprinted by the fallen angels with strong uh, self-willed forethought. And they can also be tricked into thinking, that's my Eve, when it isn't. So we can't hate on them. We're just explaining this is how the process happens. This is what happens to every human being on the planet. I don't care who you think you are it's happened to you I can stand here and say this is a lot of this is testimony this has happened to me okay that's how I can share it with you um, I was not too good to go through these failures songs 3 4 it was a li it was but a little that I passed from them but I found him whom my soul loveth I held him and would not let him go until I had brought him into my mother's house and into the chamber of her that conceived me she overcame this obstacle, no doubt, after being rejected and hurt and bruised and refined of the pride. And so the Lord returns to her presence. I held him and would not let him go. This time around, she's adamant. She's going to hold to this standard revealed to her heart. She's going to use her faith and wisdom and wait faithfully until it comes to her as promised by the Father and the Son, who are one. The chamber of her that conceived me is the womb of her mother, heavenly spirit, wisdom, the Holy Spirit. 35. I charge ye, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, by the rows and by the hinds of the field, that ye, no, ye not stir up nor awake my love until he please. Again she calls out to the daughters of Jerusalem, these are the world's women, to leave him alone, as opposed to the daughters of Zion who have already begun preparations and have a focus on unveiling their respective atoms. Songs 3 6. Who is this that cometh out of the wilderness like pillars of smoke, perfume with myrrh and frankincense, with all powders of the merchant? Come out of the wilderness, out of the tribulation. Who overcomes it? And this isn't the tribulation of the whole world. This is personal tribulation. There's a per the 144,000 walk through a personal tribulation that becomes complete at the time of the great tribulation. Okay? So this is their personal one. If this this Adam comes out of the wilderness and has overcome it. Those who have who have who overcomes that? The, those who have the Lord in glory. So those men, but this is the, we're talking about the singular, this man, who have become Christ in me, the hope of glory, um, comes as a pillar of smoke, the oil of gladness from within himself, a combination of frankincense and myrrh, for the sons are a combination of the mother and the father as the embodiment of the son, therefore they have both tree saps.
but they also have powders of ground herb, which we're not going to go into right now. Songs 3-7, Behold his bed, which is Solomon's, three score valiant men are about it, of the valiant of Israel. The bed of Christ, the mercy seat he rests on, is within the soul of man. The three score men are figurative, are figuratively the three wise men that gave Mary the frankincense, the myrrh, and the oil. So this is referring to the birthing of a man-child. These three men are also representative of Moses' law, Elijah priest, and Lord Christ, with, who, who is both together. So, Solomon 3.8, I mean so, Songs 3.8. They all hold swords, being expert in war. Every man hath his sword upon his thigh because of fear in the night. These are the swords of God, and the fear in the night is not their fear, for there is no fear in Christ Jesus. It is referring to Psalm 91, just one place you can go to find it, that speaks of this terror by night. At night the demons will be allowed to devour those that are marked with the Passover. That, sorry, I've written that wrong again. I'm, I'm, I'm tired, sorry. Uh, the demons will be allowed to devour those that are not marked with the Passover blood of the Lamb. So this takes us back to Egypt and the plagues. Solom Songs 3.9 King Solomon made himself a chariot of the wood of Lebanon. King soul of man. Not King Solomon, the biblical character and king who built a temple that God didn't want him to build. Okay, Because that I could prove in a video. God did not, I actually have. God did not ask King Solomon to build it. King Solomon was given over to a strong delusion and believed that he was the son of David that was the king to come. He believed he was Christ. Okay. So the reason the Lord let this all be written in the way that it is written is because it was supposed to be veiled heavily. The Bible had its own set of superimpositions. You understand me? Okay. So when it's called King Solomon, it means King Soul of Man. This is King Christ in the soul of man, made himself a chariot of wood. And that refers to Jacob's rods being stripped back. Back in Genesis 30, the Lord stripped back the, the, the males of all worldly spirits, like greed, lying, cheating, um, you know, whatever. You know what they are if you go into the New Testament. And prepared them as stripped backed rods. Wood, the wood of Lebanon, is just poetically expressing the value of the wood. Okay? But it begins with one, the second man-child, the male portion of the two witnesses, the Adam of the last day. Christ was our first new Adam. Songs 3.10. He made the pillars thereof of silver, the bottom thereof of gold, the covering of it purple, in the midst thereof being paved with love for the daughters of Jerusalem. These men, plural, the stripped back rods of Jacob, are his pillars of righteousness, his 144,000 man-child company. Notice there is a connection to the jewels of the bridle given to the woman wisdom, which was back in chapter 1. If you look at how Solomon the character built the temple and how Aaron, Aaron the high priest built the Holy of Holies, you will see that this is referring to the fact that these men are both the temple of God, the third temple, and the tabernacle that houses the Holy of Holies, the woman wisdom. Now, um, it's paved with love for the daughters of Jerusalem. That's not talking about the fact that they're, they're, they're not saying their women are Jerusalem. Their women are, or their wives are, the arks of the covenant in the women of the daughters of Zion. Okay, But it's saying they path a path of love that help to then wake up along because then they're going to walk with as the tabernacle that houses the woman of the Holy of Holies, right? So then when they go out and they walk and they fight all the demons or what, however we want to express that, which I'm not going to go into detail now, but when they go and fight and walk the planet, they're going to start stirring up who? They're going to start stirring up the other daughters of Jerusalem, the ones who haven't been invited in yet, the ones who haven't known Christ yet. Now you notice that it says they're going to stir, they're going to pave a path of love for these daughters of Jerusalem, not the men of Jerusalem. Why is that? Just like with the fact that he had to prepare, that the Lord had to prepare woman wisdom first and then also begin preparing daughters of Zion so that this first 144,000 men can come in because they needed the women's love to bring it, so too the 144,000 go and start to stir up the rest of the women in the world so that they too can, can, can make this exact same process repeat and a whole big multitude of men can come back, okay? And now, if you have a problem with it being women first, 
take it up with the Lord because this is the truth and this is the way of it. Jesus Christ himself came through a female's womb physically. So do not tell me a man can get to Christ without first passing through a womb of the Spirit because he cannot. And that is the way of it. That is the truth. It's always been the way that it is. Love you, brothers and sisters. I know it's heavy, and I know there are a lot of men out there who are going to be really, really, really mad and say, this isn't true, this is blasphemy. Good luck to you. Good luck to you. Good luck to you. Because the kingdom of God is at hand right now, and you are going to miss your ark if you do not stand up and pay attention. I will be back with the next installment soon.